year two, how are you? And welcome to today's English lesson. So last week we started looking at character description, didn't we? And we looked at describing a character's appearance and their personality, as well as how they move, sound and smell. Then on Friday, we also looked at creating some similes to describe a character's appearance and personality. Now, today we are going to be looking at conjunctions. Now, we have used conjunctions a lot in our work, haven't we, Yerti? We have used both subordinating and coordinating conjunctions. Now, today we're mainly going to be focusing on coordinating conjunctions. We are also going to look at one type of subordinating conjunction as well. And we are going to be using these conjunctions to join our simple sentences in our character description. So by the end of today's lesson, you will know even more about when to use these different conjunctions and you will have used some of these conjunctions in your own work to extend your sentences in your character description. And then once you have written your sentences using the different conjunctions, we are going to then look at how we can improve these sentences further. So we're going to edit the sentences. We're going to think, can we add any expanded noun phrases in here? Could we add any power of threes? Could we add any adverbs? OK, lots of different things that we can use to improve our sentences even further. Now, before we start looking at conjunctions to join our simple sentences, I would like to see what you can remember about similes from Friday. So as I said on Friday, we looked at similes and we used them to describe a character. Now, there were different parts of a simile, weren't there? We used a jigsaw piece. Now, can you remember what those different parts are? Well, I would like you to create two similes for the BFG's appearance. So here we've got a picture of the BFG. Now, things you could talk about, you could talk about his trousers, his legs, his ears, his hands, his smile, or if you can spot anything else on the picture, that will also be brilliant. So pause the video now and have a go at creating two similes for the BFG's appearance. OK, year two. So remember, somebody's appearance is what they look like on the outside. So while you're creating your similes, I also had a go. Now, I couldn't choose my favourite, so therefore I've got quite a few examples. And don't worry if yours aren't the same as mine, as long as you've got all of the different parts, that is fantastic. So I thought you could say his ears are as big as a boulder. OK, so a boulder is big. You can see that the BFG's ears are big, so therefore we can compare them using the simile his ears are as big as a boulder. I also thought his legs are as thin as twigs. So we know that a twig is thin and we can see that the BFG's legs are thin. So therefore we can compare them. The same as well with the BFG's smile and a puppy. So a new puppy most of the time is very friendly. So we can compare the BFG's smile that looks very friendly as well to a new puppy who is also very friendly. Using the simile, his smile is as friendly as a puppy. Then I've also got his trousers are as green as a leaf. So we all know that most leaves are, are green while well, they are in the summer. And we can see that the BS trees trousers are also green. So we then can compare them with the simile. His trousers are as green as a leaf. And finally, his ears are as round as a saucer. OK, so we know that a saucer that we sometimes drink our tea off is round. And we can also see in the picture that the BFG's ears are round. So we can compare them using the simile. His ears are as round as a saucer. So there we go. Well, well done if you've um, been able to come up with two similes for the BFG's appearance. And I would love to see your similes. If you could send them into the office when you send your other work for this lesson, that would be absolutely brilliant. So let's move on now to today's learning. So as I said today, we are looking mainly at coordinating conjunctions. Now, Yeti, what coordinating conjunctions have we looked at before? Well, we've looked at and before. Some of you looked at nor. We've also looked at but and yet and so. So there you go. Those are all of the coordinating conjunctions that we have looked at before. And, nor, but, yet and so. Now, I also said that we are going to be looking at one subordinating conjunction. Can you guess what that subordinating conjunction is? Well, before we have looked at if, when, after, before and because. But today we are only going to be using because to um, extend our sentences in our character descriptions. OK, so 
Here are both the subordinating and coordinating conjunctions. Now I said we are looking at because, and, nor, but, yet, and so. I would like you to pause the video and have a think. When do you use each of those conjunctions? OK, so let's have a look at this together. Well, let's start with our one subordinating conjunction, which is because. When do we use because? Well, we use because to give a reason, don't we? For example, I like this dress because it is pretty. So it is pretty is the reason why I like the dress. Or I like ice cream because it is yummy. It is yummy is the reason why I like ice cream. OK, could you pause the video and think of another sentence using the subordinating conjunction because? OK, yeah, too. So I also had another think. I thought I like puppies because they are cute. OK, they are cute. It's the reason why I like puppies. OK, now let's move on to and now. Now, when do we use and? Well, we use and for equal sentences to join two equal sentences that are not contrasting. So they're not opposite. For example, I like pizza and I like burgers. OK, would I be able to say I like ice cream and I don't like chocolate? Well, no, those aren't equal, are they? How could I change that sentence to make sure that they are equal? So I like ice cream and I don't like chocolate. How could I change that? OK, so what did you think of? Well, I thought I could change it by saying I like ice cream and I like chocolate. OK, so they are both equal because I like both of those things. I like ice cream and I like chocolate. OK, what about nor? Well, we use nor when there are two equal sentences, but both of those sentences are negative. For example, I don't like pasta. So that's negative because you don't like pasta, nor do I like burgers? OK, so I don't like pasta and I don't like burgers. So therefore, I don't like pasta, nor do I like burgers. Or you could say I didn't see my friend. So that's something that didn't happen. So it's negative. I didn't see my friend, nor did I see my auntie. So both of those people you didn't see. So therefore, both of those sentences are negative. Now, could you pause the video and have a think of another sentence where you could use nor? OK, did you think of a sentence? Fantastic. Well, I also thought of another one. I didn't buy pizza, nor did I buy pasta. OK, so I didn't buy pizza. I didn't buy pasta. So therefore, they're both negative because I didn't do them. So therefore, I didn't buy pasta, nor did I buy pizza. OK, now let's have a look at but and yet. So we use but and yet when the sentences are contrasting. They are the opposite. For example, I wanted to go to the beach, but it was raining. So even though I really wanted to go to the beach, I couldn't because it was raining. OK, so those are contrasting. You normally go to the beach when it's sunny, but I couldn't because it was raining. Or I love reading, but I don't like football. OK, so I like one thing, but I don't like the other. I love strawberries, but I don't like apples. OK, or I love strawberries, yet I don't love apples. Remember, those two can be used and um, you can change them around. They basically are used for the same reason. OK, both to show contrast when their sentences are opposite. And then we have so. Now, an example of a sentence with so in. I didn't do my work, so I had to stay in at break time. So so uses a uh, shows a consequence. So I didn't do my work, so my consequence was I had to stay in at break time. OK, could you pause the video and have a think of a sentence that has so in it? OK, did you think of another sentence? Fantastic. Well, I thought of another sentence too. I didn't feel well, so I didn't go to school. So the consequence of me not feeling well was that I didn't go to school. OK, fantastic. Well, here we are going to be using some conjunctions now to join some sentences together. So I've got the sentences. Mr Fox wears a smart coat. He wants to protect his family. Mr Fox is determined. His fur is tattered. Mr Fox's nose twitches. He can smell the farmers. So what I'd like to do is find the sentences that can go together and then add a, co a coordinating or a subordinating conjunction 
to make these sentences join together. So let me have a look at the first one. Mr. Fox wears a smart coat. Now, what sentence on the other side could I join to that sentence to extend my sentence? Mr. Fox wears a smart coat. He wants to protect his family. Well, that's got nothing to do with him wearing a smart coat, has it? His fur is tattered. Well, he does wear his coat on top of his fur, doesn't he? So maybe that one. He can smell the farmers. Well, wearing a smart coat has nothing to do with smelling the farmers, does it? So I'm going to go with his fur is tattered, OK? Because we've got one thing that is smart, but then his fur is tattered. So the fact that one thing is smart and the other thing isn't smart, what conjunction could we use? Well, these sentences are contrasting, aren't they? Because as I said, whilst one thing is smart, the other thing is tattered, so it's not smart. So would I use the conjunction and? No, I wouldn't, would I? Because they're not equal. Both of those things are not smart, are they? So therefore, I think I'd use the conjunction but. Mr. Fox wears a coat, but his fur is tattered. So Mr. Fox wears a smart coat, but then underneath that coat, his fur is tattered. So they're opposite. One's smart and one's not. OK, let's have a look at the next one. Mr. Fox is determined. OK, is it Mr. Fox is determined and then he wants to protect his family? Well, that's one reason why he's determined, isn't it? Or is it he can smell the farmers? Well, the fact that he can smell the farmers has nothing to do with the fact that he is determined. So I'm going to go for he wants to protect his family. Mr. Fox is determined. He wants to protect his family. OK, now here he wants to protect his family is almost giving us a reason why Mr. Fox is determined. So therefore, what conjunction could I use? Well, I could use because, couldn't I? Mr. Fox is determined because he wants to protect his family. So we've got a reason here why Mr. Fox is determined. So we use the conjunction because. OK, so that means that the last one is Mr. Fox knows twitches and he can smell the foxes. OK, now we have got the consequence here of Mr. Fox's nose twitching. OK, so the fact that Mr. Fox's nose twitches means that he can smell the farmers. OK, so what conjunction shows a consequence? Oh, yes, it's so, isn't it? Mr. Fox's nose twitches so he can smell the farmers. So there we go. I have chosen three conjunctions that uh, allow me to extend, join, these two sentences together. So I've got Mr. Fox wears a smart coat, but his fur is tattered. So those are contrasting. One is smart, one is not, one is tattered, one is old looking. Then we have Mr. Fox is determined because he wants to protect his family. So because gives us a reason why he's determined. Then we have Mr. Fox's nose twitches so he can smell the farmers. So that gives us a consequence of the fact that his nose twitches. So the fact that his nose twitches means that he can then smell the farmers.